Hey guys, so I'm Peter Hurley and you're in my studio and I have a ton of light modifiers behind me because I am doing this tutorial to show you how to mold the face with light. So guys, when we released the art behind the headshot, it was 90% coaching and maybe there was 10% technique and lighting in it. And what I realized is people got great at coaching. They were really getting it together. But the technique, if the technique's not there, you don't have a picture either. So I was like, why are they lighting it like this? They got the expression, they got the person, but now eh, the lighting's a mess. So we decided to come back, go back to the drawing board, and create a technical tutorial that teaches lighting the face. On men, I like to accentuate right in here, right below the cheekbone, in front of the jawline, this area of the cheek, right, right, right here. That's the area that I'm shooting for to figure out how to fill. Usually it's done with a kicker from behind. I'm looking for light right in here, right in this area to just glance off of them. And with darker skin, you don't have to kick as much. Like this is gonna be too hot. He, it takes very little to kick dark skin compared to lighter skin. What's so unique about this tutorial is that we've got two models. One male model who's dark skin and a female model who's light skin. We use the same people with all the light that we're using the entire time. So you get to read these people's faces, you get to know them, and then you get to see what the differences are in the light. I work in subtleties really well. I think that's way too much. So I'm gonna go a lot softer. Now I'm gonna watch the shadow density. I'm looking right here. When we made this tutorial, we really wanted to make sure that we had proportional modeling lamps on the flashes that we used. This makes it really easy to see all the little nuanced changes that Peter does when he moves the light closer or further away. It's also nice because if he turns the power up, you're gonna see exactly how that's gonna affect the image as well. This is more of a fill and then the kick will probably come if I skirted off the face something a little bit more from behind, but I have to see it on this angle. Yeah, that's more of a kick. When it's further out to the side, it's a fill. When I go in tight, it's more of a kick. I can remember when I first got started as a photographer and I bought the soft boxes and the studio lights because I thought those would make my pictures look like the pictures in magazines. And it took me a long time to realize that, well, the lighting itself doesn't make your pictures look good. It's where you position the lights. But it took me years to figure it all out. And so when we were planning this video, it was my goal to create something that would be this huge jumpstart for photographers. So if you, if you don't have a good handle on studio photography, I really believe you're gonna be able to watch this thing and you're gonna be years ahead of anybody who's trying to learn it on their own. So the light convergence is ahead of his face. So these two lights, the center of this light and the center of this light are hitting right here, about where my fist is. All right, that's about where the light's hitting. He's behind it, so the light is falling off onto his face and then spreading, so you get that nice fall off or off the cheek. If you have a number of different clients coming at you and you have one lighting set up in your bag of tricks, how are you gonna recreate different looks for these people? You need to be able to know how light behaves, what light's gonna do to the face, and have different things in your toolbox so that you can throw them out whenever you need it, depending on what you think fits for one client or another. I'm gonna. Start with my fill low and I'm gonna work it in. So I'm gonna have Cersei start to do her thing. Keep your chin up, keep your tilt this way a little bit. You can look up into the light, I like that. Look up into the light. So now I've just got, I'm at 5.0 on this light and it just added a touch of fill. You've probably heard me say it before, when we shot the first tutorial of the art behind the head shot, Peter completely changed the way that I deal with people in front of my camera. He, he taught me to take charge. He taught me to pull emotion out of my subject. And once again, filming this video with Peter has completely changed me as a photographer again. I had the confidence before to shoot a person in front of my camera to make them look a specific way, but now I know how to recreate almost any type of lighting that I've ever seen. I know exactly what modifiers I need to use, where I need to put them, and that's a great feeling. I've, I've never really had that before. What I did was I cut out a piece of cardboard 
and made some slats in it. So I'm gonna blast some light through here. Let's just bring them back a little bit. Go a little bigger on them. Bring it up a little bit and let's try this. Let's see what that does. Hold that. And let's take a look here. Uh, I like it, it looks good. For the first three hours, Peter talks about light in general and he shows you how each light modifier looks on the human face. But I have to say, my favorite part of this whole tutorial is the final 90 minutes. He combines everything we just learned and produces six completely different, unique photographs. Guys, so what I've done is I've put two V-flats here with the white side reflecting in. So what it's gonna do is it's just gonna fill every single crevice and make the shot even softer than it already was. Beautiful. It just was an idea I had. I was like, we need to somehow flatten out the contrast of the shot just a touch. And it just went and it just brought it all together. It's building light. You're building light as you go. If you want to be a professional photographer, I think it's so important that you're well-rounded. You may not be a beauty photographer, but I think it's really important that you learn how to do beauty lighting. You may not be a fashion photographer, but I think it's important that you learn that edgy type of light. And that's what I'm so excited about this video for. Peter goes through all the different genres of photography, so many different lighting setups. I cut a board in half, a little piece of foam core black, threw it up on this stand, created a slit. I can vary the size of the slit. It's gonna be sharper if I get it closer to her, so I want it super sharp, so I just want it just out of my frame. Guys, it really doesn't matter what you're shooting. If you're a portrait photographer, you've got a person in front of your camera, you need to know how to light the face, and you need to know how to light it properly. Watch where I'm putting the light. See how there's, there's, I'm opening it up, opening it up, opening it up. I'm looking right here, I'm gonna stop when the light's right there so that the cheek really has fall off. Now we've made three full length tutorials so far. We did the first one with Peter, the second one on wedding photography, and the third one we recently released with Mike Kelly on architectural photography. And I feel like we're getting better and better with each of these videos. And this one is no exception. I, I truly believe this is the best tutorial that we've ever made. I feel like it's completely unique and I haven't seen anything else on the market that's like it at all. You may know that I have a signature lighting setup that I use day in and day out for my headshot work. If you go out into the city and you see one of my headshots, people, it's a very recognizable look and I like showing it off and I, I know people have gotten a lot out of trying to replicate that. However, this is a different ball game and it's still really nice light, but if you wanna go moody, let's go back again. Watch, watch the light on your subject as you're moving it. Let's try it again. Amazing, and you just got a more dramatic shot. Once you can see light, your photography is going to completely change. And I feel like that's what Peter's done in this tutorial. He really teaches you to see light in a completely new way. If you look at her, you can see I've got the hard shadow, like the, the, the hard light that we did a while back. I want you to watch. If I put, this is just an envelope. If I block that, this is similar to what a beauty dish does. Look at what it does to the shadow. See how soft that is? Now the light's being reflected back into the parabolic. So guys, you can see, watch, as I'm moving this around, you can see the shadow on the background of the, of the plate that blocks the light. So I wanna put that, I wanna put him in that plate so I get nice soft light around him, move it a little bit closer, and then watch what it does. If this is beauty lighting, you'd wanna watch where that plate is. Just like every tutorial we've produced, this is a digital download. So you can go to the F-Stopper store, purchase this product, start downloading it, and then in the same day, you can watch it on your computer, you can play it on your iPad, you can even stream it on your TV. The inverse square law is essentially the intensity of the light is equal to one over the distance from the light squared. And why this is so huge is because of light fall off. I love fall off, I love playing with it. So this, is, this equation is really important to me. If there's one thing I've found is that people think that they're gonna get the answer by making a gear purchase. And then they make the gear purchase and the answer isn't there. You need to know the basics of lighting. You need to know the intricacies of lighting. You need to know the gamut. And then you have to know exactly why you're putting that modifier on the light and know the outcome before you do it. When you're looking through magazines and you're trying to figure out, dissect images that you've seen taken that you really like, that you want to recreate, you're now gonna know exactly how far away that light source is. 
you can tell that we had that thing right up on his nose for the first shot, which had like ridiculous amounts of fall off, fall off, fell off very, very rapidly. When we move it back, a lot less fall off, a lot more detail. And I've played with light over the last 14 years of my photography career, day in and day out. But I have never experienced anything like this. I've never taken this amount of time and gotten into this amount of detail in it. I know I learned a ton of stuff and upped my game. I completely upped my game this past week of shooting. I'm really psyched and I can't wait for you to see it. I've got it in frame, but I don't care, right? We're gonna leave it there and see what happens. Hold that, hold that guys, perfect. I can work with that. There we go. Now we've got a ton of light flowing around there. We not only lit Cersei, we also spilled some light onto Kahari's face in a big way. <laughs>